Next up, we have uh, Savannah Pabu, and so she will be talking about cultivating the South African Plant Conservation Network. Hello, everybody. Um, I'd like to now take you through um, to Africa. And to start off with, I'd like to thank um, the EXA committee for sponsoring my travel here to this conference. So I'm Subhajna, and I lead a national citizen science program called CRU, Custodians of Rare and Endangered Wildflowers. And we are based within central government. We also funded by NGOs, um, which is the Botanical Society of South Africa, as well as the Mapula Trust. So South Africa is quite a vast country. We have nine biomes, um, and we've got two countries within South Africa, which is Lesotho and Swaziland. <clears throat> so we're the only country with um, our own plant kingdom. We've got 6% of our world's plant species, a first mega diverse country to fully assess the risk of extinction of our entire flora, which is quite remarkable because we've got just over 20,700 plant taxa. And nearly a quarter of our plants are considered either threatened with extinction or of conservation concern. And that graph at the top, that is really hard for me to see um, across, I'll, I'll just face you and look at the screen, um, basically shows the major threats um, that our plants for, uh, are experiencing. And the top three are habitat loss, habitat degradation, and invasive alien species. So very f similar to those threats that um, Australia species are experiencing. So conservation statuses guides a wide range of um, conservation interventions across the three tiers of government. And I'll get that through that um, later in my talk. So we've also got three of the world's biodiversity hotspots. Um, along the west coast, the, um, the bottom of the country, and, and then the east coast. So along the west coast is the succulent Karoo, which has just under 2,500 plant endemics. Um, and that starts up from Namibia all the way down to um, the northern and western Cape provinces. The Cape Floristic region, which uh, most people internationally are very familiar with, has just over 6,200 endemic plant species. And the Albany, Maputo land, Ponder land hotspot, which starts from the Eastern Cape province through KZN and up into Mozambique, has just under 2,000 endemic species. So zoning into citizen science projects um, in the country. So we've been having various projects happening since um, the late 1940s. Um, and this table shows the various taxa um, and groups of species that citizen scientists have been working on. Um, and for this talk, obviously, I'm going to be focusing on one of the plant programs. So looking spatially at the scale of projects, we've got majority of our citizen science projects working at a national scale, um, and then a few um, area-specific, and only two, uh, two programs are provincially specific. So looking at how our citizen science program fits into the government scheme of things, We've got the Department of Environmental Affairs, which is our national body. And then SANB, South African National Biodiversity Institute, is the agency to do biodiversity work across the country. And we work with South African national parks. So all of our protected areas um, is managed by SAN parks. And then we feed our biodiversity priorities to, for on-the-ground implementation with the various provinces. So all of those logos at the bottom are um, a few of our nine provinces, so it's similar to your states here. Um, and then that information again gets pulled into SANBI um, and up again into national government um, because we then provide science-based information used for underpinning um, various policies nationally as well as internationally. So we also created the um, plant strategy for co plant conservation. Um, and this happened in response to the global strategy for plant conservation. Um, and we work with various network of partners, so from government departments to NGOs to academics. Um, so it's quite a wide, strong network of botanists who worked um, on this strategy. And it's basically got 16 outcome-based targets. Uh, which fall under five objectives. So I'll just take you through the objectives. The first objective is around the eFlora project, so trying to get all of our plant literature um, into one portal, um, one source. So 
all of our herbarium stuff as well as plant literature and descriptions um, over the centuries to be captured on the eFlora website. Uh, we also do lots of red listing work and um, the third objective within, I mean the third target within this objective is around um, building capacity um, within red listing as well as digitizing our herbaria because quite a lot of our specimens are, are quite old and, and we're now trying to get all of this online um, via JSTOR. Objective two is around conserving our plants in situ, uh, sorry, ex, um, on an ecosystem level as well as at a species level. So we look at where our plants are, whether they are in protected areas or not. We look at production lands, so working with Department of Agriculture. Um, we look at plants in situ and ex situ um, and recovery programs. So it's quite a lot of targets um, with an objective two. Objective three is looking mainly at our CITES um, listed species and also species used for sustainable use. So getting indigenous knowledge about our plants into, the pro, um, into various projects. And then objective four and objective five is around human capital development. And being a third world country, we're very aware of um, the, the threats of our plants. We've got a very strong system um, and a strong network of botanists and students, but we're still finding that taxonomy is a global scarce skill um, that's happening. And we're facing, um, well, we're placing a lot of emphasis on getting students interested um, and into the sector. So we run various trainings at universities, whereby I go out and I would do a guest lecture at a host of universities across the country. Um, speaking to them about threatened plant ecology, about various avenues of finding job opportunities and internships um, and bursary applications. And then we also take them out into the field doing specific uh, field work. So you can see with the array of photos, there's um, identification of tree species, um, monitoring specific threatened plant populations, um, or also just identifying plant species to, uh, per plant family um, keys. Uh, we also focus quite a lot on internships, um, and although funding is very hard to come by, but we try on an annual, um, on an annual basis to get interns into the program. Um, and on, on the left there is so Malise, and he's a uh, matriculant that we found based in a very rural village um, in the Eastern Cape province, and we managed to upskill this individual without any um, tertiary education. He's now a full-time employed student um, worker at the herbarium and we're now trying to get him um, to do his tertiary. Then there's Schlingiwe and, and Devadin, and they came to us as master students and are now red list scientists. And Mishlatse Mokhale um, was an unemployed student up in Limpopo province, so near Kruger National Park, if those of you that are aware of um, the province. And um, he's now working with the provincial department, um, being the botanist for the province. Um, so this heat map basically shows where our threatened species are. So the darker the blocks or the, the blotches, the higher the number of species of conservation concern in those areas. And for that, that reason, we've got crew citizen scientists based in these areas. Um, and down in the Western Cape, we've got a crew node. So there's three staff members um, within the province and we, they support the various groups um, in the Western Cape. And then along the Eastern Cape, uh, Eastern Coast, we've got two nodes, one sitting in the Eastern Cape, and that's the area that has very few um, dark blotches. And that's because it's our huge data gap area in the country. So we've got a node there, and we've got a few citizen scientists starting up. Um, and then I work in Durban, which is in KZN. Um, that's on the, on the top there, and I work throughout the, the country, so from KZN, Gauteng, um, Pumalanga, and Limpopo provinces um, at the top. So basically, we provide um, an annual workshop for our volunteers where they get together and share their experiences and challenges over the year. We get plant specialists to come in and give particular plant courses, so either on a specific genus or a plant family, or we do ecology or pollination or um, bird monitoring, um, so there's, there's various different courses that we provide and then also during the course of the year we would look at various identification courses. Um, we also create identification sheets 
So we pull out plant literature and we break down the botanical terminology so that a layman uh, on the street would be able to identify the particular plant species. So our groups do various things, um, species monitoring, systematic sampling, environmental education. So it's not prescribed of what exactly a group would do and it just depends on what the group dynamics is. So we just take you through the crude data journey. So we, we get our um, records, um, distribution records from the red list assessment. We provide that to our citizen scientists and they would go out um, collecting rigorous data um, using um, our data forms. And this is information that's required for the red list assessments and they also collect plant specimens. Um, and that feeds into the two databases, so the crew database as well as the national database. And then our red list scientists would use the IUC and red list categories and criteria together with um, the crew data that's come in, plant literature, um, various sources of data, as well as herbarium specimens, to then assess the species um, and rate its risk of extinction. Um, and then this data then informs spatial development plans, land use planning, uh, protected area expansion, so at a national level, provincial level, as well as local level of government. So this is an example of um, the work that we do, and this area is the Durban Port Harbor, and it's the busiest har harbor in um, sub-Saharan Africa. And this orchid is found just at this locality, so just where that, the, the green area is, and it's, it's quite tiny. So you can see our volunteer is um, on the floor kneeling down to, to take this picture. Um, so this plant has been established um, as a result of immigration. And we only managed to find it once in the four years of serving. Uh, but given the data that we've collected and how the population is doing, we managed to now downgrade the species from critically endangered to endangered based on the regional criteria. Um, we've also been doing quite well with our uh, data. And this is just a graph showing the um, various IUCN categories and the number of species um, nationally versus how much crew has collected. So we focus quite a, lit, uh, quite a lot on threatened species statuses, which are critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable, um, and also quite a lot on data deficient species so that at least these species can be assessed um, into one of the threat categories. Um, these are the taxonomic achievements by our citizen scientists. Um, and you can see there's this one plant named after the program itself, but all the rest are named after um, the citizen scientists that has found these, um, the particular species. So in, in conclusion, I'd like to just thank all our citizen scientists for which none of the work uh, we do is um, ever going to be possible because we've got over 300 citizen scientists as compared to about six of us um, in the team nationally. And thanks for listening and any questions.